Alright guys, have to come back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far as the kickoff tournaments continue to go down. A fair bit of beef emerging last night between Clayster and Scrappy. Scrappy, of course, of Toronto. Clayster now of this potentially somewhat underrated Carolina Rule Raven squad, saying that Scrappy, despite having a good season last year, will never be the player that Clayster has been, will never have the championship success that Clayster has had, and will never have the prize out of this ads that Clayster has managed to achieve. Scrappy therefore responds in kind. Is Clayster right, especially given what happened at the World Championship last year? Very much interested your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Shotzi doing a clay here in the background. And we'll get back to that more so in a second. Just to quickly mention, the other day we talked about the changes to the point system this season. And the fact that they are giving more points for lands. The issue is, there's more points for lands for the placings as we see. But there's also more online qualifiers. Still worth 10. And there are less LAN events. There's only 4 going into the World Championship. So the calculation that CDL Metrics did the other day. I think he um, failed to consider a couple of aspects. And what it basically means is that last year, the percentage of points coming from majors was 46%. And I think that um, that had gone up a couple of percentage points in this calculation the other day. But actually, the improvement is even less than that. It actually goes from 46% of points for majors to 46.8% for majors. So like nothing has changed basically this year and last year the amount of points that will be accrued from online qualifiers is exactly the same in percentage terms as last year so they can say what they want about trying to make land more important but um they clearly didn't do any real calculations here because it hasn't made actually any difference at all so classic uh, cdl activities i'm not gonna lie this also from charlie intel who said back on november the 9th that the spawns have been significantly upgraded karma doesn't seem to agree karma is usually one of the players who does rather well in the early parts of titles. He doesn't seem to be having that much of a good time on this one right now, as um, he says here, like, you know, the spawns haven't really improved much. And I think this is one thing that's frustrating people. Like, the game plays, the time to kill, stuff like this, is good. You know, Dead Silence and Search and Destroy, it's an absolute miracle to behold. The maps, sure, a lot of people who didn't play them back in the day don't have the rose-tinted glasses, and they play maps like Derail, Underpass, Wastelands, you know, let's say a state, and they're like, what it, you know, what is this? Why did people like these maps? And they maybe they didn't, but um, you know, when you look back 15 years ago, you might think that you did. Not like some of the maps are bad, but some of the maps are worse than they could be, probably, because the spawns don't make that much sense. There's still some work to be done on that. Karma reckons that there's a long way to go. And um, even as he says, I'm so bad at this game, I don't want ever to load into map again. So yeah, I'm sure that Optic will hope that indeed as their coach of the team, he will actually be able to continue getting the knowledge in to help out the rest of the roster. But he did also go on to mention that as far as he's concerned, this game is not competitively ready. There's a few reasons why, I mean, spawns wise, it's not great. There's a few other glitches as well in the game that need to get resolved. But at the end of the day, is this much different to what I've seen for the last couple of years? You know, sure, this game might not be competitively ready. Let's be honest, the Counter-Strike players say the same thing about Counter-Strike 2, which is, um, you know, look, it's a more polished game than this Modern Warfare 3 is, but it's not as polished as CSGO was after, you know, 11, 12 years of CSGO's refinement. So even Counter-Strike 2... It's Counter-Strike. A lot of the pros are saying, yeah, I think even Simple said he's not even going to play for a while. He's going to take a break because there's issues in the game they want to have resolved. So there's always going to be points where new games come out that, okay, it's not competitively ready for this reason, for that reason. But I'm not sure that any Call of Duty has been competitively ready for the last, you know, many years. Like, I think the season always begins with a game that has its flaws. And to be honest, it always usually concludes with a game that has its flaws because there's certain issues that aren't fixed over time. So, um, look... At the end of the day, while well, Modern Warfare 3 might not be great, at the same time, it's probably better than last year's game was or the year before game was at launch, which uh, is maybe good enough to what we can hope for. This is one glitch, though, that I will mention. I believe the developers are working on resolving this now. I think it's in their Trello, so um, it should be getting sorted. But if you go to plant the bombs, so you, let's say you get the rock down here, as, as the kids say nowadays, and, um, you know, you just go and hide. You bring up the mini-map, and we've seen t this type of stuff before. If you bring your little ping cursor thing over the bomb site, if somebody gets on the bomb... And then, but I think in order for this to work, they have to get on the bomb, then they have to get off the bomb, and then you start to see this come up where it says defend. So this happens when somebody hops it, then it gets off it, and then when they get off it, it says defend. And then when they get on it again, this then disappears. So now they're back on the bomb now, now they're off the bomb, and um, now they're back on the bomb, and now they're off the bomb. So that's basically 
I think, how this works. So it doesn't, it, maybe it's not 100% viable because if you're in a one versus one, are they going to hop it and get off it without reason? Maybe not, but um, it's still, it still can be used to an advantage. And it's a glitch that, of course, shouldn't exist. It's not as bad as what's happened in the last couple of games where you can literally see through the wall that the, um, you know, the circle around the bomb side, I think it was Modern Warfare 2, wasn't it? The circle around the bomb will just change if they're defusing, which is, yeah, not ideal. But it does seem like they're working on resolving this glitch. So a few things that need to be fixed, but once they are in a couple of weeks or so, with any luck, Sledgehammer will be more responsive than, let's say, last year's developers were. We might have at least a reasonable competitive game by the time the game launches. There also was this from the, um, the well, Hex's vlog that he did yesterday when they were in the car here. And it was like an old school vlog. I love when Hex brings the vlogs back and stuff. It was always a good time. But um, yeah, so Shotzi was, well, Scott was basically talking about this. If he does come back and play for the team, he's not going to be letting Shotzi tell him what to do. He's not going to be watching a late pitch. He's going to be doing what he wants on the team. But um, yeah, by the day, it looks more and more likely that Scott might have to step in for a longer time than was initially planned with Prez not getting there quite yet. Of course, he's been playing the kickoffs with the Optic guys. And well, I'm sure Scott hopes that that doesn't have to continue too much longer. And of course, Prez is back in business and they can play scrims. But if Scott does need to step in, then he will do so. But um, of his own accord, you know, he's not going to listen too much to the warlords on these types of things. This is also Dashi. I'm guessing this nade, does it bounce off the lights here? I'm not exactly sure what this nade bounces. Yeah, I think it probably bounces off. Maybe this is um, a thing that tells you where the exits are. That's probably what it bounces off, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it bounces off that and it goes back and takes it out. So yeah, unlucky Dashi for this one. But let's talk about this Clay sister stuff because Clay is officially back for the new game. If you guys aren't familiar with the clay falling off the map meme, then um, you've probably not been around all that long. Originating mainly during Black Ops 3, where clay would be falling off maps like Evac and anywhere you could fall off, clay would give it a go all the time. And it continued into Infinite Warfare and beyonds. And even this game here on High Rise, he's done it again and he's done it already. So Clay's officially ready to go for the new season. Now, Clay and Scrappy had a bit of a back and forth yesterday. They were going into, I think they might have been getting into a tournament finals here. And there was some debate as we saw earlier today around, I think I'm guessing they were talking about the Holger. They might've been talking about something else, but um, for most of the day, they were using that Holger weapon or whatever. And then the pros, as they have done, as we talked about earlier today, decided, that it was going to get banned and, and gone from the game. Now, I think Scrappy was trying to say, all right, Clay, like, we're not going to use it, you know, we're not going to use it going into this um, tournament. And Clay was playing with his team. You can see Goderex, Gwyn, Real, they were playing as a team. And I'm guessing, given we can see Kalinex here, that it was probably Toronto on the other side of this one as well. So um, basically, Clay was getting told, all right, let's uh, not use that gun. Let's go for, I think you can actually see the Holger in Clay's hand here. So I imagine that's what Scrappy was getting at and saying, all right, we're going to GA this weapon and not use it here for the final because everybody else has agreed to. But to be honest, when you've played an entire day of tournaments with, um, or you've played that entire tournament with that weapon, you get to the finals and people are saying, don't use it. It's like, well, you know, come on. Kelly thinks, you know what? I'm going to use it anyway. I don't care. And I'm pretty sure that's what they went on to do. But um, after Scrappy was talking some trash at Clay, Clay then responds in kinds saying that, um, yeah, Scrappy, given his pedigree so far, he's not a particularly good player and he's not going to be able to achieve what Clay has achieved. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, for some reason, Clay uh, said you are, and I quote, ass, Clay. Uh, how do I unmute this motherfucker? <laughs> Loud here. and clear. Yo, Scrap, just so you know, you're absolutely f terrible, dude. Like, your, yeah, lifetime why are you earnings, even your lifetime earnings are like 50 grand, bro. Like, you know, just, just understand <laughs> that, like, you'll never get to where I'm at, right? Like, it's, it's 7 Yeah, morning. we'll see. It's 7 in the morning. I'm not GAing a gun that we've been using all night. What are you saying? It's all good. That's a, that's a shitter answer. I'll let him have the last word. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too tired. Bro. Oh, he's funny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, we actually gotta be him now. <laughs>
So a good bit of trash talk between the both of them, to be fair. Clay kind of uh, let Scrappy get the last word. And to be fair, Scrappy also got the last laugh because apparently he then six on him to bed. Clay said then hosted him. And as Scrappy says, you know, my guy. It's so good to see that, um, you know, there's not anything malicious in this. It's just kind of good fun. But still, you'll never get to where I'm at. And look, is Clay still right? Scrappy had a phenomenal first year in the CDL. Was positive like every single event that he played. Won an event last year in the you know Texas Major, right? That they won with that Toronto team, made the grand finals of the World Championships and then didn't work out in his favour. And to be honest now, the league is very competitive. Clay has competed for a very long time. He's won three rings over that time period. Won, you know, however, probably approaching a million or million plus whatever in terms of prize earnings. And of course, you take off tax and that and stuff like this. And it's not, um, you know, maybe as spectacular as it looks on paper. But nonetheless, Clay's been around a very long time, won so many events and is considered, I mean, let's be honest, Clay recently said that he believes himself to be the top, you know, second best player of all time just behind Crim6 other people would put him maybe top you know, top three top four top five definitely in that ballpark so um, look is Clay right the Scrappy will never be considered to be the player that Clay is more than likely yes right I mean it's very difficult to imagine that Scrappy will be able to climb the rankings as very few have done does he have the talent to do it though I think possibly yes and um, I mean look already he's been dropping some nice clips on this game and looks like one of the better players that we've really seen so far in this title as you might expect Expectants. If you just look at some of the numbers here from this season, there's only been five players over the entire CDL period as a rookie that have gone positive at every single event. Awakening did it back in 2020. Standy did it in 2021. But of course, he didn't play that many events, to be fair. And a couple of them were pretty marginal. Hydra did it relatively emphatically also in 2021. But in the last two years, there have only been two players that have done this. Pritt in 22 with um, some very impressive numbers here actually towards the end of the season. And then Scrappy as well, who um, at all six events this season had a pretty, you know, solid KZ. I guess a 1.03 at champs wasn't uh, anything crazy. And that was the big one, of course, that could have cemented a phenomenal season. But in the end, had to settle for just a very good season. And then obviously people were bringing up uh, about the grand finals result and what New York did and Kismet did in the grand finals. So look, I don't know. It's early days for Scrappy. But I think that the way this roster is looking so far, it's looking pretty promising for this Toronto team on paper. They're really good. And it wouldn't be a massive surprise if they won at least, you know, an event or two going into this new season. Will they be able to win the World Championship? Of course, Aix has predicted again that uh, Toronto will win champs and therefore Scrappy is going to get that ring. But of course, Scrappy has a very long way to go if he wants to get anywhere close to the kind of accolades and respect that Clay has within the community. And it'll be a nice little rivalry to follow this season as well, to be fair, because on paper, Carolina won't really be competing with the likes of Toronto for event victories, you would think. But when they match up, it's always going to be a little bit nice to see how that one goes. Lots of 1v4s as well going around. I think for the first like 12 hours, there weren't many crazy clutches, but over the last like day, really, I've seen lots of 1v4s. There was one from Attach, there was one from Capsdal, there was one from Dashi that we saw earlier today. And it does seem like a game where clutching is most definitely possible and maybe more possible than it has been previously and in recent years, just because Dead Silence is now a thing all the time. You don't have to worry about waiting for it as a field upgrade in order to do anything on the map. So very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.